today we would discuss some aspects of the development of Mughal architecture. We all know that with the emergence of the Sultanate in India, certain architectural styles are developed in Indian architecture. But when we come to the Mughals, we see that they had developed to a considerable extent those forces and influences. Actually, we can see that there had been two clear-cut changes from the Sultanate to the Mughal period, so far architecture is concerned. The first one is that gradually there is a change of emphasis in the Mughal architecture from the use of red sandstone to white marble. More and more buildings are made, particularly after the coming of Shah Jahan, in marbles. The second one that we see is that instead of classical, colossal, and strong buildings in the Mughal period, the emphasis has been on making the balanced and proportionate buildings. We would see these two features in some of the Mughal architectures, which we will discuss very briefly. Babur, as we know, started the Mughal Empire in 1526. But, as he said, or wrote in his own autobiography, that he has made only four gardens out of which only one garden in Agra has been found so far. He made two other mosques, which are most usual. There is nothing uh, exceptional about these mosques. Humayun was supposed to have built one city called Din Panah, but that city has never been found. And we do not know, excepting in the writings of his uh, biographer Khandmir, who wrote Humayun Nama, what is this city about? So therefore, when Shersha came, he found the field quite open. He did have certain architectural skill or interest. And we would discuss very briefly two of his uh, architectural works because these two had some influence on Mughal architecture. One is his mausoleum at Sasaram in Bihar. The mausoleum, a building of several stages, had unique feature that there is no plinth. It started straight from the ground. The middle floor is completely empty, and there are eight cornered surrounding walls, in front of which there is a lake, and it is through the lake on a pathway that one reaches the mausoleum. There are other aspects of the mausoleum, but these do not uh, interest us at the moment. The one of uh, Shersha, which is important to us, so far as Mughal architecture concerned, is the Purana Kella. Unfortunately, there is only one mosque and two gateways present at the moment. Now, in these two gateways, we see the use of the red sandstone with marbles. This is the pattern that Akbar had followed in his architectural works. Before we come to Akbar, or we discuss Akbar's ones, we can discuss very briefly the tomb of Humayun at Delhi, built in 1564 by the widow of Humayun, Haji Begum. Haji Begum employed an architect of Persia, Mirja Gyasuddin, and therefore, in the tomb of Humayun, 
the Persian influence could be seen. This building is a square one built on red sandstone floor in the midst of a garden with four gates and with a dome which is rather unique in India at that particular time. It is unique because it was not fully a Mughal dome. It has two covers, one of red sandstone, inside is empty, and then on top of it was the marble cover. This is the model that was followed later to a certain extent by Akbar, but it was finally discarded from the time of Jahangir. In any case, the mausoleum of Humayun, or tomb of Humayun, there are other tombs of Humayun's family inside, is a typical one, archways, there are many uh, rooms from where one can go straight to the middle room where the tomb lies. Now, along with that, we have another uh, mausoleum of a noble, of Akbar, called Atka Khan. ATK Atka Khan, built in 1564. There are two features of Atka Khan's mausoleum. One is the use of colored marble, which has been used for the first time in a mausoleum. And the second one was that the surrounding walls had kind of sculpture in it, which is also quite unique. So from there we come straight to Akbar. Now Akbar's achievements are many and we discuss merely, very briefly of course, Agra Fort and the construction of Fatehpur city. Agra Fort took a long time to construct. It was started in 1562. It is an irregular circle. Its length was 2,700 feet. The middle road of the fort runs parallel to the Jamuna River. And Abul Fazal said that in the fort there were 500 buildings. Most of these buildings have been destroyed perhaps by the order of Shah Jahan, who converted some of the sand, red sandstone buildings into marbles. In any case, the unique feature are two. One is that some of the buildings have Gujarati styles, and some of the buildings contain Hindu influence of a bird flying or something like that. Now, these in Hindu influence we would see far fuller in the construction of the buildings of Fatehpur Sikri later. Now, Akbar's Agra Fort is not the only one. Akbar had constructed the Fort of Lahore, which was a smaller one, much smaller, but it is far more regular. In Agra Fort, the rooms are irregular rooms. There is no uniformity in the rooms, not of equal size. And uh, the rooms had sometimes connections, sometimes covered by other buildings. In Lahore, the rooms are very regular. Actually, it is a rectangular one, slightly half moon type. And this rectangular plane has been divided equally and therefore the rooms are also fairly equal. There is a surrounding wall like that of Agra at Lahore. Apart from Lahore, there was also another one which Akbar built, a much bigger one, that of the fort of Allahabad on the confluence of Ganges and the Jomuna. Now the fort of Allahabad, roughly 3,000 feet in length, is one of the biggest forts of Akbar if we leave Fatehpur Sikri. Now this fort now has only one building left. The rest has gone. 
and this building has created a bit of a controversy. The general opinion is that this is the haram, sara or harem in popular terms, or called Janana Mahal. But one cannot be sure about this. The fourth fort that Akbar has constructed was the fort of Ajmer, much smaller, but far more beautiful. The main feature is that there is a middle room or hall with pillars and rooms on all sides. This middle hall with pillars, this is a feature in Akbar's architecture. In other forts also, we get the same thing. But here, the pillars are very well done, very well ornamented, and there is a surrounding wall which is also well orna ornamented with uh, groups of uh, themes like elephant fights, going hunting, etc. It has been postulated, perhaps rightly, that Akbar used to come here for rest and relaxation. But one can never be sure about it. The principal work for which Akbar has been known ever since is the construction of Fatehpur Sikri. It is 25 miles distant from Agra and its radius is 10 kilometers. It is on a hillock, but the royal complex which Akbar built, which is generally called Dolat Khana, this Dolat Khana complex is on the sloping plain of the hillock. There is a little bit of history as well as controversy in case of Fatehpur Sikri. The history is that in 1568, Akbar came here to visit Sheikh Salim Chisti, who was then living here in a Kanka. And Akbar came here to ask for a son and built a small stone palace for himself where he stayed. And it is in this palace that Prince Salim was born in 1569. We'd come to the controversy later. Now, from 1570-71 onwards, Akbar began to live regularly at Fatehpur Sikri and began to construct the palaces. Now, most of the palaces are in ruins. Most of the buildings are in ruins now. But some had been finally excavated, cleared by the Archaeological Survey of India, and had been written by many people, many, many people with plans. We need not go into the details, but I would refer to some of the features. Fatehpur Sikri is uh, one particular feature that attracts attention is that in one complex, one would have the living room, that is Daulat Khana, of the emperor, the office rooms, the Janana Mahal, the stables, and all other paraphernalia, which is very rare in India. And this entire complex, which is now called Fatehpur Sikri, is outside the area of the place where the nobles had began to construct their homes. Most of these homes are in ruins now. The reason is that although these are of stone, but these are done in a very hurried way. And as we all know that Akbar did not live longer here, and Fatehpur Sikri was deserted soon after, Jahangir came and stayed for some time, and Shah Jahan also, as we would see later, stayed for some time. And after that, some Mughal emperors came from time to time, but it is never that uh, glory that was there during the time of Akbar. 
Now, Fatehpur Sikri, if we come from the Agra gate, if we enter through the Agra gate, we would see that it goes straight to what is known as the Devani Am, the public audience hall. From there, it goes straight to the Jama Masjid. Now, this entire area, as I have said, was made of stone, quarried from the hillocks of Shikri. Fatehpur is the name given by Akbar. Actually, earlier it was called merely Shikri. For this purpose, for the building of this city, for the construction of these buildings, uh, workers from all parts of the Mughal Empire were brought. There are uh, foreign evidences, particularly the evidence of the Father Montserrat, who praised these buildings very much, particularly the one Daulat Khana. And Montserrat says that Akbar himself used to work at the cutting of the stones. Now, one comes from the Agra gate to go to Jama Masjid. West of that was the group of buildings. Actually, now one could see there are three buildings. But these three buildings were not separated during the time of Akbar. These were made of one plan, connected with each other by covered corridor. The first one was the Daulat Khana, the living room of the Mughal Emperor. Then we had the Hamam Sara, the Haram Sara, the uh, Harem or the Janana Mahal. And the third one, there was uh, a pillared hall, which is considered to be an office, which in any case has created a kind of controversy. Now these are, of course, separated. In the Daulat Khana, there is a double-story building. The ground floor of this building is a painted one. The ceilings are painted, the walls are painted. And this is generally called the Khwabga, that is, the bedroom of the Mughal emperor. Khwab is the dream, so Ga is the room, a dream room, that is the bedroom of the Mughal emperor. The next is the Haram Sara, is the building, in which one portion is today shown by the guides as the uh, building of Jodhabai, Jodhabai Ka Koti. And it has been stated that Jodhabai was the wife of Akbar. Unfortunately, history does not give the name of Akbar's wife as Jodhabai or any other name as such. There is another building nearby which is called Sonehi Koti. This building is also called Mariam Ka Koti. If you go to Fatehpur Sikri, the guides will tell you that this is the building of the Portuguese wife of Akbar. Once again, history belies this proposition, however romantic it is. There is no evidence of Akbar having a Portuguese wife. Actually, this is the building of the first wife of Akbar, the princess or the daughter of Raja Beharimal. Her name was, the name is not given, but the title is Mariam Zamani. And we have a large number of parvanas and sanats which had been codified by a scholar named Tirimzi. Farmans and documents from Mughal Harem, in which the documents of Maryam Zamani has been found. Now, Maryam Zamani, or the daughter of Raja Beharimal, the first Hindu wife of Akbar, did not stay here. That we know from other sources. She used to stay with the Rajput ladies in the Haram Sara itself. The Haram Sara, which one could go from Daulat Khana by a dark covered passage, and this passage is no longer there, but Haram Sara has a garden inside, like many other 
harams of the Mughal days. And in this garden, the water is brought out from the north from a tank by underground pipes, then brought to a fountain in the middle of it. And from this fountain, this water then goes through the garden in different levels. What is interesting is that while going through these different paths of the garden, the water goes through the different colored lamps lighted after evening, and it gives a certain different glow in the garden. From this garden, the women could go to the Nagina Masjid, which is nearby. Now, this kind of haram or haram sara could be seen also in the Mughal period buildings in other places like Rajasthan. And there still exists, there is no problem here, even in Gwalior. So, therefore, uh, one would see that on the one hand there is a kind of a luxury that is there, all built of red sandstone with very little marble. But the Hindu influence is certainly there to a great extent. Now, very close to the Haramsara, there is a two-story building which is called Hawa Mahal. The scholars have decided that this is a Persian influence, that is a resting place for Akbar. And close to it, there is a four-story building called Panch Mahal. The Panch Mahal is entirely built on pillars which could be seen. On the ground floor, there are 84 pillars, and the total number of pillars was 177. Now, it has been stated that this is also a Persian influence, and one could go on the top and rest and relax, which perhaps Akbar did. Now, besides this, the Haramsara, the Hawa Mahal, the Panch Mahal, there is, of course, the Devani Aman, Devani Khas. The hall of public audience is usual. There is not much of a difference. Devani Khas is also similar, and it is within the Daulat Khana complex, the Devani Khas. What is interesting is, particularly in Fatehpur Sikri and in Daulat Khana complex itself, that there is a very big hammam, particularly close to the Daulat Khana, with a division inside, one room for hot water and second room for cold water. The water used to come from a tank, which is on the western side of the of Fatehpur Sikri, and it comes underground, goes through the hammam, and then it again goes underground with soiled water. Or in other words, there is an underground drainage system prevalent. And this is not only seen in Dolat Khana Haram, in Dolat Khana Hammam, but also in other parts of Fatehpur Sikri, where there are many hammams, particularly one is there near Haramsara, and so on and so forth. So therefore, in Fatehpur Sikri, even if it is a, it is based on a hillock, where there is very little water, the water is pumped from the tank. There is a huge lake on the west, and there are other tanks. One is Onuptalao, very well known. This tank by Persian will and then is brought through the palace complex and other buildings, which has been done in case of Delhi, but in case of Delhi it was much easier. Now, from these places there are two more 
important sites. One is the Jama Masjid, one of the biggest mosques, built first in 1571. And the other is the Buland Darwaza, in front of which there is a tank. The Bulan Darwaza was built after the conquest of Gujarat in 1575-76. It is 173 foot high, square. Its rear and frontal portion are separated. But the Jama Masjid had four uh, doors, but now three are closed, and only the eastern one remains. And through this, Akbar used to come. So in the Fatehpur Sikri, the total area is 10 kilometer, but the palace complex is 6 kilometer. And the Fatehpur Sikri is one of the wonders of Akbar's architectural creation. Built entirely on red sandstone, quarried from the hillocks, and in some cases uh, brought with marble. This is one of the wonderful constructions of medieval India. Thank you.